Hello hackers! Welcome to Pwn College, I'm Jan and in this video we're going to talk about the causes of memory corruptions. This is the next video in our memory errors module. We'll cover um, three or four causes uh, depending on how much time we have. Um, if we need to we'll cut this into two videos but we'll see what happens. So we're gonna go toward a, uh, through a couple of very um, common causes of memory corruption. This is, list isn't exhaustive um, and in fact there are definite missing pieces that we will cover in later modules, missing causes. But let's roll. All right, um, let's start with our classic buffer overflow. Uh, this is what um, I discussed in the last module. Um, or sorry, not in the last module, in the last video. It's just very simple. You have a buffer, it has a size, and you write too much data into that buffer and you overwrite it and clobber the stack. Um, this happens a depressing amount and it happens because C does not implicitly track sizes of objects. Uh, if you want to be careful about sizes, you have to have checks all over your code to be extremely careful and it's very, very easy to forget these uh, checks, right? So here I have the smallest possible example, um, I think of a buffer overflow, which basically just has a small buffer on the stack of 16 bytes and we just overflow it with 128 bytes of data. Um, nice and simple, there's no world in which this program isn't uh, buggy. Um, let's take a look at what happens. All right, and, and this first one, I'm gonna run through full exploitation end to end, all the way through to a um, um, kind of a win condition. Uh, we'll talk about shellcode injection and so forth uh, as part of memory corruption exploits in uh, uh, the next module actually in putting uh, everything together. But um, let's take a look at this minimal example. For now, I just added this win function and this is where we will redirect code execution um, after our overflow. All right, let's compile this. Again, um, for this video, I'm compiling uh, everything without what is called stack protection. This Later this module, you learn what stack protection is. So let's compile it. All right, so um, no stack protector, nice and, and, and easy here. Um, I'm also gonna disable uh, position independent executable uh, so that we know where all the addresses are. We'll just make it very simple for the purposes of this demo. Um, and we'll compile buffer overflow, that's C into buffer overflow. All right, so we have our buffer overflow. If I run it and I give it a whole lot of input, it will crash. Cool. Um, if I, uh, so let's actually, well, actually if I see where it crashed, I look at my kernel log and I see that it crashed here. If I do uh, disassemble and see where that uh, point was, it was right here, it crashed at the return. At the return, we have a crash, um, we have a buffer overflow, we perform a buffer overflow, um, um, we exploit a buffer overflow vulnerability and that caused the program to crash at the return. Let's see what happened in a little bit more detail. Um, if we uh, run this in GDB, if we run it, of course it asks us for some input and we put in a bunch of A's. Boom, it crashed. That's where it crashed as expected on a ret. And of course return pops the return address off the stack. Let's see what's on the stack, all A's. So. There was a buffer on the stack. We overflowed it with all A's. Now there's, excuse me, the return address is all A's and um, it's bad news. Okay, um, let's exploit this, right? Our goal, of course, since we control the return address and the program is returning, we can return anywhere we want. And this function is nice enough that we have compiled or sorry, this program is nice in the sense that we have compiled this win function. If we call the win function, if we just return here, we'll get our flag. And I created, of course, a little fake flag to um, for us to leak. All right, the win function is at 
4011AF. That's pretty awesome. Um, so how do we do this? Um, for memory corruption exploits, I highly recommend that you use Pwn Tools. In general, please use Pwn Tools. If you've been getting away without Pwn Tools so far this course, this is probably the time to switch. So let's um, write a program um, that uh, in Python that will interact with this uh, vulnerable program and over will perform the attack. Um, Pwn Tools has some awesome um, debugging capability. It has GGB integration. If we do this to launch our program, it'll act exactly as a normal process if you had done pwn that process, but it'll instead launch up a debugger um, for us to interact with. So this is pretty perfect. It, it, we have a running process, but that running process is running in GDB and we also have access to, oops, to GDB. Um, all right, so uh, let's just see what this looks like if we send to this process the letter A times 128 times. Uh, the byte A, all right. And if we just continue here, we'll see that it crashed as expected, all A's. So the question is, how many A's do we have to send? Recall that buffer was 16 bytes long. Um, let me take a look at it again. Whoa, that's the binary, oh no. Here it is, 16 bytes long. Is the return address right after that? Well, no, recall there's other stuff on the stack. There's the saved base pointer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So really what is, um, on uh, the return address is somewhat farther than 16 bytes. There's padding, there's a lot of stuff that can be there. So we have to figure out how many A's to write. This is actually pretty easy with Pwn Tools. Pwn Tools has something called a cyclic pattern. We can say, give me a cyclic pattern of 128 bytes. And with this pattern, any four um, um, uh, bytes in this pattern, we can query uh, Pwn Tools and say, where in the cyclic pattern are these four bytes? And it will tell us. So this will tell us exactly how um, far into our input the return address uh, gets overwritten. So let's restart it here. Let's quit out of this GDB. Uh, restart this guy. And we will now write, instead of sending this, we will send the cyclic pattern of 128 bytes. Here, let's continue. It crashed. And let's see what is at RSP. Okay, you can see this is some other printable stuff. This is our cyclic pattern. Um, let's just... Uh, it. So here it, it's ga, ha, ya. This is all uh, uh, cyclic pattern values that we can look up. So let's take this G A A A and query um, Pwn Tools. So we can do cyclic find to find where GAA is in the cyclic pattern and it says 24. So we need to go 24 bytes in or 24 bytes into our input is when we start overriding the return address. So now we know this is great. So now let's test this out. Uh, let's close out this GDB, run this again. And now um, when we send, let's send A times 24 plus B times eight. So now we should override the return address with all Bs. Set continue here. Correct, it's all Bs. Okay, now we're ready for the final step. Um, let's take a look um, where in the buffer overflow the win function is. It is right here. I could have also disassembled it and whatever, but here it is. 401 1 AF. And of course, Pwn Tools has a, a nice function that'll convert this AAA number um, into the uh, byte representation in little engine or whatnot that you're currently exploiting um, in memory so that this is what this will look like. So now we launch it again. Oh, I forgot to log out the other GDB. All right. 
Now we launch it again. Let's um, instead of the bees, we'll send that. Okay, continue. And we crashed and we crashed somewhere else now. So I will posit that what happened is that win ran and then win returned and then win returned to some other crap that, that, that crashed because we overwrote um, too much stuff. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Um, we can just read all, read out all the bytes. Are you joking, phone tools? Oh, right, 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 right. So let's log out of GB. And here it is. The bytes that we received were Pwn College 3080. Uh, that's the fake flag I, I, I created, just a random number. All right, um, now that we have all of this, we can just create a, a very short script. We, all we have to do is replace GDB debug with Pwn.process, and this will relaunch things outside of GDB. And then we do um, that read all, enter, boom. There's our exploit. Awesome. So that is um, the uh, um, stack buffer overflow, the very classic example. I'm actually going to end this video here and we'll do another video for the uh, remaining causes of um, uh, memory corruption. See you very soon.